good afternoon. Um, today we will talk about uh, material-driven formation in digital design. Um, we uh, have divided our presentation in three blocks. Uh, a short uh, explanation about uh, Mediated Matter Group, a little introduction about biomaterials as a polymorphic devices, and that it will serve as a kind of uh, our main uh, research that is called water-based fabrication. It's something that we develop in uh, Media Lab. We have the, yeah, we get lucky to design and, and develop this platform. So, Mediated Matter is led by Neri Oxman. Uh, we uh, are focused in designing by nature, I, by, for, and with nature. We have been using uh, commercial technologies in 3D printing, but as well designing our own custom uh, platforms and, and technologies. Uh, here you can see some of the projects that um, we have been, uh, we have used uh, additive manufacturing technologies. The Seal Pavilion, for example, uh, the water base that later we will talk a little more, as well as um, uh, augmented uh, wearables using uh, yeah, um, uh, 3D printed technology and, and biology itself, and glass transparent uh, 3D printing. Okay, you can. We obsess with biomaterials because of their many capacities. And uh, I recently joined the Silk Lab at Tufts, and I'm the only designer in a biomedical engineering lab. I've been fascinated by how wood, skin, shell, bone, or materials that you will see later that could come from shrimp or from algae actually perform amazingly in nature, interface with the environment, but also in terms of fabrication, they can be um, processed in low energy, mild chemicals, room temperature, and in water. So this is something I've experienced firsthand when transforming silk cocoons into silk solution by using mostly almost cooking techniques. Of course, uh, have been researched for almost 10 years, but have come to this very simple recipe that we all can now understand and use. Those silk solutions can be transformed into extremely technical materials and devices. It's in water, it's low energy, it's mild conditions, but it's transformed into these amazing materials and devices from uh, micro needles, resorbable electronics, um, uh, credit card-like vaccines that we can bring in our pockets. It's, it's really fascinating. Jorge and I have been obsessing and specializing lately in looking at pharmaceutical and medical materials and bringing them into consumer goods and architectural structures. These are some uh, examples of the Silk Lab where I'm looking at uh, jewelry that can be edible or that has a smell or that has a color and that we can make playful and, and use it for education of children and high schoolers. Even more deeply in the next project that we will present for the next 10 minutes, uh, we worked on building a water-based fabrication platform, a platform that can work with all these biomaterials that are based in water and where we can digitally tune them in incredible ways. So yeah, this uh, platform started with uh, this fascination of water, how water assembled a uh, simple building blocks in more uh, complex structure in nature. Uh, we start to search which materials can be uh, kind of uh, perfect for our purpose. We, we start with chitin and cellulose. Both uh, can perform like uh, man-made uh, ceramics, but they still can storage uh, quite, uh, quite large amounts of water. We, as uh, Laya said, I think, uh, we start like uh, searching for how they um, in bio, in pharmaceutical and medical applications they use for make this tissue scaffolding as well as uh, drug deliveries. And we took this challenge to try to transform all of these uh, uh, materials and uh, technologies for for uh, more product based and architectural uh, uh, systems. We start with uh, the pipette. We we transition from the pipette to the petri dish. Uh, and at the end, we design and develop this platform that we can use with a robotic uh, arm. Uh, kiting, uh, the kiting that we use is uh, coming from a 
byproduct of fish industry. It's quite, an, uh, yeah, it's a kind of uh, sustainable product. We uh, uh, managed to transform from kiting to um, kaitosan, uh, something that uh, can be uh, extrude. And we uh, print uh, films that can perform uh, quite impressive. Uh, they, they can, uh, they, they take uh, 40 megapascals in tensile strength. And this is uh, kind of one of the final products, uh, kind of more in large scale that we, uh, yeah, design at the end. In order to make that, we developed this platform and we had help from uh, our advisor, Nelly Oxman, as well as our colleagues at the lab, but mostly from physicists, chemists, and biologists at Harvard University who know these materials from a long time ago. So we started by measuring our gels, understanding how they perform, and looking at which criteria we had to ask to our platform in terms of shear stress, viscosity, um, rheology. So our first intuition was to make this large syringe system that's actuated by motors and mounted into a very precise positioning system. Um, quickly, we looked into nozzle designs. Can we mix up the nozzle, all these gels together? Can we extrude them in parallel fashion? How big, how small can this outlets be. And our first intuition was, OK, this is a material that makes insect wings, insect shells. Can we make a dragonfly wing by 3D printing our gels? And we made that half meter dragonfly wing. But if you look closely, you'll see that nature would never make this continuous thickness of struts and cells. It would be reinforced where it needs to be. So we obsessed in making our technology aware and capable of doing that. So we wanted to, and we achieved that kind of structure where thickness is graded along the structure. And in, this is in the wet state, this is in the dry state. We had this organization that reminds of insect wings and venations of leaves. So in order to do that, we had to work with a pneumatic system where we could tune the extrusion force at every millimeter along the trajectory of our robotic arm. Um, the way we achieve hierarchy and shape is not by designing the shape, but actually designing the extrusion uh, geometries. We work with different thicknesses of extrusion, different pressures of extrusion, as well as with different stiffnesses of material. It's the same material, shrimp, water, but in different concentrations. And that's something that designers, at least us, <laughs> appreciate very much, that when we look at the structure and we see color gradient, we are looking at the stiffness gradient. We understand structure just by looking at it. So the way this works, it's a, bi a biomaterial, water-based material. So as it loses water, as it dries, it will find the shape. And by giving it hierarchy, we can determine which is the final shape. Here you, you'll see everything in one, which is easier to understand. These are the crustaceans and insects that carry chitin in nature. The, what we do is we mix chitin or chitosan with water and vinegar, and we make our gels. The more shrimp we add to the mix, the stiffer this gel is going to be. We mount them into these huge syringes that can hook into a pneumatic system in the robotic arm. And then, as, a, as I said, we don't dictate a shape that goes through a slicer, but instead we design actually the tool path, the pressure path of what's going to be deposited. Because this is a biomaterial, because it binds to itself, we can build this in parts that will bond together, so we can have large four meter long leaves or wings that are actually made in, different, in a different sequence of hours. Here we are um, assisting the evaporation of water with the ventilation system. The material grips onto the substrate, builds up all these forces, when when we release it, it finds shape in one. So we get 3D by using a 2.5D printing system. The inertia that this has is amazing, and it's just given by hierarchy that is present in nature. So we use water as a mediator of properties, as a structural shape giver, and as well as a 
biodegradable agent. We can mix this with vinegar and water again and get a gel that we can print back. If we leave it in the ground, bacteria will obviously biodegrade it naturally. This is an exhibit we did at the MIT Media Lab to show the capacities of the platform. And this is what happens when we add water and vinegar to the structure again. Um, as we said, this was uh, Jorge and I leading the research, but we had amazing undergrad support, uh, amazing researchers in our lab, and, uh, and state-of-the-art collaborators. More in detail, what something that fascinates us is the way these structures are able to encompass structure and skin in the same material system. So you look at this and you see tensile membranes, but also structural beams. And it's the same material, just different concentrations. A bit more in detail, the, the challenge here was to coordinate or synchronize a positioning system, that is the KUKA or the robotic arm, and an extrusion system at the same time. So we could have control of the position and speed, as well as pressure. One of the byproducts of controlling pressure at every time, at every moment of the fabrication, is that we now don't deposit a sausage-like cylinder as we do in regular 3D printing, but we can have different extrusion shapes. We can actually have a sinusoid or a, uh, an exponential extrusion shape, and that gives us the opportunity to have even more complex folding because of material distribution. We use that wrapping and folding to hook our structures into uh, CNC milled wood stands, to, to have wall-like structures as well as inertia giving V structures at the center of the same piece. And these are the final results. So here you've seen everything we do with chitin, with this amazing biopolymer, but also chitin silk, uh, bone, they assemble with other materials in nature. They are binders, they are natural binders. They look at uh, assembling with minerals, with fibers, with protein. And then we looked at which are the best composites for our, for our chitin. And we looked at uh, sands, fibers, and other minerals. One of the most successful ones was making the material flexible. Now we don't have a self-supporting uh, hard plastic but we have something that we can fold. We can make jewelry, we can make little clutches and fashion items out of this. Very importantly, we can make packages that dissolve in your sink with a bit of vinegar or that can be composted in your backyard. We think this is the most successful one, the plastic bag that can be composted after a couple of uses. Here we use very low concentration chitin and very hard uh, chitin so that we could reinforce the stress lines of the plastic bag. Um, yeah. Another thing we can do, because we control this platform, is to print um, discontinuously. We can print these little patches that drape. Now we have materials, plastics, that actually accommodate the human figure. This is the way we do it, and these uh, as, as Thomas explained, made us think that all these materials support life in a very fundamental way. So what happens if we give our little pockets of water actually bacteria and life? This is something very uh, initial. Jorge is looking at developing this further at the, at the Media Lab. And here we gave our printed patches to the biology department, and they grew photosynthetic bacteria with actually output of biofuel, and they grew a E. coli that could um, assemble gold nanoparticles and make the material conductive. So we had photosynthetic and conductivity in the same material system again because it's a biomaterial and supports life in very special ways. Our favorite, though, the, more, the most architectural one, is the composite that encompasses bioplastic chitin and cellulose pulp, the same cellulose we use for architectural applications. This has incredible flexibility, and it's, um, the Vidya del Matter group um, is doing now a project that Jorge is leading that is looking at making these in very, very large scale with even bigger robots and more material. 
Um, this is it. We wanted to show you what we understand by material-driven formation. We use biomaterials a lot because they allow us to tune properties very quickly and to adapt software, hardware, and then shape, not shape at the beginning, to, to what the material is actually telling us. Thank you very much. I'm not the phone.